choosing which MacBook model is the right one for your needs was already notoriously hard, and now it's even more confusing. Hey everyone, I'm the one and only and today we'll be taking a closer look at the newly redesigned base 16 inch MacBook Pro and also compare it right next to the previous Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro in case any of you guys upgrading are wondering just how chunkier this new machine is. As many of you know, yes it's no secret, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is pretty chunky, I don't know man, it's really been packing on some quarantine weight or something. But this is arguably a good thing since now we have some ports that are returning, a much bigger battery, and chipset improvements that make this computer the go-to for professionals. We already looked at the new 14-inch MacBook Pro compared next to the 13-inch and now it's the big boy's turn. We'll keep benchmarks at a minimum and save an in-depth performance test for later. So if there's a particular configuration you're looking at, drop it down below in the comments below as I have two other MacBook Pro models still on the way. This won't be my primary MacBook as my maxed out M1 Max 16 inch Pro is still on back order. But at least for those wanting to pick this new beast of a machine up, we'll get a chance to see how it compares against its predecessor when putting them side by side. So, with all of the introductions out of the way, let's see what all the hype is about on the newly redesigned 16-inch MacBook Pro. Let's roll that intro. Well, 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 we're back with yet another unboxing, but I'll make this one really quick as it is the exact same unboxing experience as the 14-inch I just reviewed, just for one small difference. If you want to see how the 14-inch MacBook Pro stacks up side-by-side -side against the 13-inch, make sure to click the card at the top right. So damn, okay, be careful now. You might want to stretch before carrying this out the store and maybe carry the Glock with you because man, this box is heavy and it is an expensive machine. Pretty big package here, not gonna lie. That's what she said. I picked up the space gray model for this base model, but my Mac Daddy M1 Max MacBook Pro will be in silver. And honestly, space gray was cool when it first released, but now it's quite boring on the MacBook line. And I quite enjoy silver. I know I'll most unlikely be in the minority since everyone seems to just really dig space gray over silver. So you know the drill, color matched Apple logos and MacBook branding, contents of the box and serial number information on the back of the box, pull on the tab, open the lid and voila. Doesn't she look gorgeous just sitting there, shrouded in that frosted plastic. Again, just like the 14 inch unboxing, we get our literature packet with warranty information and color matched Apple stickers. But what is slightly different on the larger 16 inch models versus the smaller 14 inch is our charging brick. You see, as I mentioned in the 14 inch unboxing, the base model, 14 inch only comes with a 67 watt power brick and you have to either get a more expensive model or be upcharged $20 to get the better 96 watt adapter that enables you to quick charge 50% in around 30 minutes. Well, I'm glad to inform you guys that on the 16 inch models, it does not matter. They all come with a massive 140 watt power brick so that you can quickly recharge that massive internal battery. Then, heading back to the chunky MacBook, remove the plastic that protects the chassis during shipment, open the lid, remove the plastic film on the screen, and the MacBook will turn on automatically and will be ready for you to set up. So, this video will be a lot shorter than the 14 inch unboxing and comparison since every new feature is carried over on the 16 inch that's on the 14 inch, including max configurations. So, in essence, you can get the same computer, you know, the same internals and such, but you just have to choose what size you prefer. Of course, the bigger model will be slightly more expensive than the 14 inch. For example, the base 14 inch starts at $19.99, while the base 16 inch starts at $24.99. In terms of configuration options, we have a lot going on here. First, you have to choose your color, either space gray or silver, and I do not understand why Apple can't shake things up by introducing funner colors on their pro line of products. I think we're all tired of the standard silver and space gray, at least I am. It'd be cool to see other color options like we see on the MacBook Air, but I doubt that'll ever happen, but who knows? Then you have to choose your system on a chip. The base 16 inch will come standard with the all new and very powerful M1 Pro, but can be configured to M1 Max chip with a 10 core CPU and a jaw dropping 32 core GPU on a MacBook. Then you have to choose your memory or RAM. This is what Apple calls unified memory, meaning everything is all together on the chip. This single pool of high bandwidth, low latency memory will allow you to blaze through anything you throw at your new machine. The base model comes with 16 gigabytes as standard and should be enough for most people. 
but can be configured all the way up to 64 gigs. But there's a stipulation to the 64 gig RAM models. The 64 gig RAM models are only available if you upgrade to the M1 Max chip. Again, 16 gigabytes should be enough for most. But if you want a nice sweet spot for $400 more, you can get 32 gigabytes of memory, which should blaze past everything you throw at it for the most part. Remember, the more memory your computer has, the more apps you can run at the same time and the better they will perform. In my in-depth buying guide I'll be making later on, I'll go a little more in-depth on all of these configuration options, don't worry. In terms of storage, all models are going to feature the newer, blazing fast SSDs that support read speeds of up to 7.4 gigs a second and come standard with 512 gigabytes on the base model. And honestly, nah Apple. That's just not enough, especially on a pro device. Now that the iPhones can record in pro res, codecs are only advancing and are requiring more and more storage with each passing year as technology advances. Just imagine when 8K recording becomes the norm. 512 gigs simply won't be enough, especially when dropping more than $2,500 on a computer. My advice, do yourself a solid and consider spending just $200 more to double your storage to at least a one terabyte SSD. You'll thank me when you don't have to go in on a regular basis to delete large projects or files. Again, we'll save the in-depth testing on benchmarks for future dedicated videos, pinning up different models head to head. So make sure to hit that red subscribe button to always stay in the loop on all of my latest videos. But for some quick benchmarks over on the black magic disc speed test, we see that it regularly hovers around 5,000 megs a second for both read and write, which is lower than Apple's estimated 7,600 megabytes, but it's still incredibly fast. I'm gonna have other models with more storage, so we'll have to see if the higher storage options offer faster speeds. Again, the keyword Apple emphasizes is up to 7.6 gigs, so 5,000 megs a second is already pretty impressive. And over on Geekbench, we see some pretty impressive results as well. For single core, the all new base 16 inch MacBook Pro gets a score of 1,764 and a whopping 12,383 for multi core. And that's just the base model. Imagine what the maxed out M1 Max will score. And for the metal test, and for the metal test that aims to look at graphical potential, we see a very strong score of 39,769. Again, look out for the comparison reviews as we'll put up MacBooks head to head and see how they compare. But okay, now looking at it side by side to the previous gen and wow, there's a stark difference, especially in terms of display quality. We now feature a 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display. The tiny 0.2 difference is due to the fact that now our bezels have been slimmed down dramatically, despite the addition of a notch. The 16 inch Intel models did slim down the side bezels a lot more when the 16 inch was refreshed from the 15 inch Intel models, if anyone remembers that. So the difference in bezels isn't as apparent as going from the 13 inch to the 14 inch since the most recent Intel 16 inch models did shrink the side bezels by a considerable margin. Still though, the notch makes it blatantly obvious that you have the newer model. And let me just brag on the display a little bit. I actually have the Pro XDR display monitor. And when that sucker launched, it came in at $5,000 and did not come with the stand. You had to pay a whopping 999 stinking dollars for the stand. There was even an audible murmur and some gasps when Apple initially unveiled the stand. It was hilarious. Insane, I know. Then slowly, the XDR display started to make its way onto other products such as the M1 iPad Pros and even the all new iPhone 13 Pros. But never has Apple included the XDR display into such a thin package. Plus the addition of ProMotion makes the larger 16 inch seem even more immersive. Dimension wise, like I said, the 16 inch MacBook Pro has been ordering DoorDash a little too much and packed on a few pounds, or if we wanna be technical, a few grams. The overall footprint of the MacBook Pro 16 inch largely remains the same, that is, at least in terms of length and width. The new MacBook Pro sees an increase in width of about 0.22 centimeters. So again, pretty negligible. Another 0.22 centimeters larger in terms of depth and in terms of thickness sees a slight increase from 1.62 centimeters on the previous Intel 16 inch pros to now 1.68 centimeters. And for weight, we go from 4.3 pounds to 4.7. And trust me, you will notice the extra heft, especially when carrying the 16 inch in the hands. 
This also means the previous leather sleeves are no longer compatible. And damn, that really sucks, especially considering how expensive those leather sleeves were. Last but not least, thanks to the added thickness I mentioned, Apple was able to improve on battery life by sizable margins. The M1 was notorious for having an exceptional battery life, and the M1 Pro and M1 Max set to expand on that, thanks to performance increases, but more importantly, efficiency improvements on the new chipsets. The newly redesigned 16-inch Pros are rated at up to 14 hours of wireless web browsing, up 3 hours from the prior gen, and up to 21 hours of Apple TV app movie playback. Needless to say, this machine should power you through the whole day no matter if you're just browsing social media, watching videos on YouTube, or on Photoshop or video editing. Don't worry, I'll be performing a battery drain test on the new MacBook Pros very, very soon. I noticed that now that the 14 inch can be fully spec'd out to match the max specifications of the 16 inch, more and more people are gravitating more towards the 14 inch because of the smaller form factor and portability. But I think the larger 16 inch still has a massive customer base who enjoys the larger display. And now with ProMotion and the Liquid Retina XDR technology, man, the 16 inch is unmatched and looks sexy as hell. Sure, it's a bit bigger, but hey, we don't body shame here on the Juan and Only and actually welcome the extra weight gain if it's it means we can get all of our precious IO back and better battery life. Again, if you want to go over a more detailed look at the new redesign with everything that's new, check out my 14 inch unboxing video link in the description. The 16 inch matches the 14 inch to a T, the only difference now being the different sizes, but I still feel a 16 inch and 14 inch aim to reach different target audiences. I feel 3D rendering professionals, photographers, and video editors will ultimately gravitate more towards the larger models in order to work with more screen real estate. The 14 inch though feels like the perfect size and is great for DJs, music creators, audio editors, and even students who use more advanced and sophisticated software. In any case, let me know in the comments below which size you prefer and why. This has been my unboxing and quick review of the newly redesigned base 16 inch MacBook Pro. I think it's important to put it side by side against the prior Intel 16 inch Pro, so any of those on the fence about the sizing can look at the differences in size and make a more informed decision. If this video helped you out, consider dropping a like to help the algorithm feed this video to more eyes. Again, benchmarks and performance tests have been purposely skipped, as we will do a ton of testing in future videos, set to be released in the near future. Until next time guys, hope you all enjoy and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.